Hi there, this is Mother Betty, the rector of St. Matthew's Church in Fairbanks. Welcome to Bits of Wisdom from our Bishop, the Right Reverend Mark Latine. This is the first in a series of itty bitty videos where the Bishop addresses a variety of subjects. If you have questions that you'd like Bishop Latine to address, send them along to us at St. Matthew's. We are glad you're here. Bishop Latine, I'm so glad that you're here with us today. And we had just a couple of questions that we thought we might get some of your thoughts about. The first one was, how does a vestry or a bishop's committee fit into the larger diocese? And then how does the bishop fit into that? And perhaps even, how does a bishop fit in when it's a, a regular vestry and not a bishop's committee? Is there a difference? No, oh, that's a really good question. And of course, it speaks to, I think, one of the great things about being an Episcopal church is that we are actually uh, a fellowship. You know, we're, we're, um, uh, we're, we're part of a whole. Um, and so one of the jobs the bishop has is to sort of symbolically and in, 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 in the bishop's ministry, uh, help those parishes to connect um, with one another, if you will. Um, you know, the, the bishop, despite some people's opinion, the bishop is not the boss of everybody. In fact, the bishop has very little authority over the work of an individual vestry or bishop's committee. Um, for me, I think that the work of a vestry and the work of a bishop's committee is really to be the chief stewardship and mission team for a congregation. Now you ask what's the difference between a vestry and a bishop's committee. Um, you know, the the canons of our church really only recognize a vestry um, as a leadership team with the responsibility of taking care of the common gifts, the, the, the money, the building, um, taking care of any of the people who are working for the, the parish. Uh, the vestry has that responsibility. We use that term bishop's committee sometimes when, uh, when a congregation is small or they don't have a, they don't have a rector or a priest in charge. Um, but the reality is what we need is a group of people who are going to exercise that leadership, that, that sense of um, taking care of the property, taking care of the community and taking care of making sure that the, the mission and the ministry of, of that congregation is done. And, and that really is the responsibility of the vestry, the bishop's committee, the mission, uh, the mission committee, um, by whatever name we use to describe it. So those people are really the leaders. They're really uh, elected leaders who are responsible for making sure things function. And that's very Episcopal. You know, we, we have a structure. We're not just sort of a free-form uh, institution. We, we have structure. And so the, uh, regardless of what it's called, what, and whether it's a big church or a small church, whether it's in a city or in a rural area, those committees work exactly the same in terms of being the leadership of the church. Right. You know, the thing is, we tend to, we tend to think that there is a, a, a standard model for a vestry or a bishop's committee, you know, and, and, and those, uh, every vestry has to have subcommittees, let's say, for getting the work done. But the reality is, and this is what I'm saying, we are part of a, we're part of a whole, but, but each parish uh, is set in its place, in its context, and needs to be able to function, operate, and succeed in its ministry within that context. So, you know, there, there may be no need for, uh, for one congregation to have a, an outreach committee, let's say, um, where, where uh, another parish might need uh, to have a subcommittee that can handle and take care of organizing all of the, the work that's being done on behalf of that, that community. 
Does that so, make sense to answer your question? I think it does. I, mean, I just have one, one last follow-up. I'm curious about when a bishop might be called in to help them. If, if the bishop is indeed not the boss of everybody, tell me how your role interacts with the role of a vestry or a bishop. And that's a very good question. So, um, you know, this is, uh, I, I did bring some, this is a really good book that I really encourage all folks uh, who are part of an Episcopal church to read. It's called the Vestry Handbook. It's a, um, it, it, it's a good resource. It's from Morehouse Publishing. And, um, you know, one, one thing that it says in here actually speaks to that question, which is that while the bishop doesn't have any, well, I don't want to say any, but while the bishop doesn't, uh, doesn't have a lot of authority, the bishop's authority really is in the bishop's ministry as the chief pastoral minister of the diocese. So whenever a vestry finds itself um, struggling. Uh, maybe there's, um, maybe they're struggling uh, because of personnel issues. Maybe they're struggling because they're just not able to sort of discern. They've lost the, the a vision, let's say, of who they might be and how they might serve uh, in the name of Christ in their community. Or maybe they've got um, financial struggles. Uh, the bishop would certainly be interested in wanting to help and um, in any way possible to to support and and um, resolve those conflicts. So so that would be when the bishop would would come in and would mostly would be uh, by invitation of the vestry. And that's why when a bishop comes to do his his visitation, um, Oftentimes, the bishop wants to have an opportunity to meet with the vestry, to talk with them, to see how they're doing, to see what uh, what their vision is for their ministry. Um, so, uh, so that that's sort of I think one of the chief I see is my chief joys. I love to go on a visitation and hear from vestry about what they're what they're doing. You know what um, what's something you're proud of is oftentimes a question I'll ask to a vestry and and hear their joy. Now. A bishop has a lot of authority with regard to the clergy. I mean, as you know, the, as a person, when a person is ordained, they take vows to obey their bishop, um, and the the bishop uh, may, I guess, exercise an authority with a congregation if they've gotten sideways with their clergy person. Um, so, so that would be the other place where um, where a bishop might exercise some authority. But personally, and I think I'm in company with this, um, bishops are, uh, would be very hesitant to step in um, until it was a crisis. And oftentimes what, oftentimes what, what vestries and clergy might perceive as a crisis um, isn't really a crisis yet. You know, it's just figuring some things out. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, the vestry has a responsibility for the care and feeding of their clergy, um, and the vestry has a responsibility to be the chief ministers within their congregation. I mean, it's their, it's all Christians' responsibility to do ministry. Um, and, and the vestry, uh, I think bears the responsibility for sort of organizing and, and helping to direct the ministry that happens in their in their congregation in their parish, which means that you know the vestry should know the gifts of the people in the pews. Um, it's not just the rector who's called to do that. In fact, the rector's job is to be the chief pastor of the congregation. Um, the rector's authority actually rests uh, with the liturgy and with the prayers of 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 the community. Um, and the pastoral care of the community. Well, thank you so much. I have appreciated having you here and we're grateful for your thoughts. Yeah, I uh, thank you. And I know that you wanted these, you know, you're asking a bishop to do short little blips between five, three to five minutes, which I know is difficult, but um, I, I would encourage folks to, to have this book, but I also would encourage folks to look in the canons, Constitution and Canons of the Church. One of my favorite, you know, this might even be a separate question, but. One of my favorite things is to point out to people that uh, 
who the Episcopal Church is, is defined in the preamble of our, of our Constitution. And it describes us quite simply as a fellowship uh, in the one holy apostolic church that is in communion with the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury and basically who lives out our faith through the Book of Common Prayer. Thank you for joining us today. Watch for announcements of future bits of wisdom from the bishop on other topics. This project is produced at St. Matthew's and is possible in part by a grant from St. Mary's Anchorage.